Morning is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 21, NASDAQ up 27, S&P's up 6.5, gold contract up $2, trading at $14.96 an ounce. We had silver up 23 cents, $17.81 an ounce. Light sweet crude down 71 cents, $53 a barrel. And I heard the news when you're doing the news that uh, oil contract is getting uh, two different thrusts. We'll have to get uh, in and look uh, like a little news driven, selling driven, um, yeah. but more than a dollar to the downside in that and crude. We had the gas contract down 10 cents, so we'll check that out too. Copper, copper's up a penny and a half, trading 265. You get notes and bonds. The 10 years down five ticks, trading 129.27. 30 year is off 17 at 159.22 and King Dollar. King Dollar down 68 ticks, 97.213. The Euro is at 111. The Yen is at 108.46 and the Pound is at 130. Look at that, 130 to 1 US dollar. No vote, but it looks like no hard Brexit. That's what they're saying. We'll see if that's the reality. Yes. Yeah, so 130 on the Pound. We go over to the Pound first and take a look at the Pound. You're going to see. It's quite a nice run, you know. Ooh, we're, yeah. we're talking about some uh, real numbers here. Definitely. You know, you get about a week and a half ago, you're at 121. Well, yeah, 122. 122. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bottom line is that uh, this is game on to, uh, I think this is 133 is the next swing point up here. Yeah, I heard one analyst out there saying, listen, if hard Brexit's off the table, 130 might be the floor. Yeah. Just an opinion, but it sure. would make sense, right? In right. terms of a lot of the risk you saw down at 120 was definitely the possibility that Boris was going to lead the charge and that it was all or none. Yeah. And maybe that might be off the table, but there's there's a lot to be determined over there for sure. And if we go inside the uh, Dow Industrials, folks, the Dow's up 12, having a hard time holding price whatsoever. And, of course, that's going to be all about Boeing this morning once again. Man, oh, man. You get Boeing uh, putting 90 negative points, United Health 18, IBM 17, putting some... Um, Juice into it, uh, upside is that Goldman's putting 22, Apple putting 21, and 3M putting 17. If we get over and take a look at Boeing, it's pretty it's pretty wild, isn't it, when you think of these last companies? I can't even, that, the words don't, I haven't yeah. found the words to express, <laughs> you know. So, you know, what you have here, folks, is that the chief technical pilot. Is and, that what it was? Yeah, okay, and I wanted no, to read the full. I was can, catching. Can, can you imagine, like, just to be the chief technical pilot of Boeing is, like, pretty intense, okay? I would say you have quite a resume yeah. if that is your title. Right. Yes. And uh, what happened, folks, is that, you know, he was messaging, you know, some other pilots saying, man, Something's wrong with this sim. We'll have to get into the exact in story. And this happened. Could, this because, was two years yeah. before this this incident happened. You know, so Boeing the incidents. If we why don't oh, we yeah. pull up the news? So yeah. we can really. I'd, I'd love yeah. to pull up the article just because I haven't read it myself. And man, it's just it's it should be criminal, man. Let's see. So right, right, top one, I believe. Right now, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the shares tumbled Monday, extending the previous session's sharp drop after the plane maker received at least two analyst downgrades on the increased risk related to the company's best-selling mat. The move follows reports that a pilot working on the 737 during its certification expressed concerns about a feature that was subsequently implicated in two fatal crashes. Um, so... Let's see if they, we can see what it says. You know, you have analysts saying, we can no longer defend the shares in light of the latest discoveries. Um, yeah. Right. Okay, can I just say, um, this is probably going to be, let's see if they link to. There we go. So Boeing pilot expressed worries about 737 MAX safety in 2016. A high-ranking Boeing pilot working on the 737 MAX three years ago during its certification expressed misgivings about a feature implicated, calling its handling performance egregious. Um, that is very bad. According and, to instant messages, right? Yeah, and yeah. they got it in writing, right? And yeah. So you got, um, yeah. The FAA finds the substance of the document concerning the agency said. The FAA is also disappointed. Yeah, disappointed. Not a strong enough word that Boeing did not bring this document to our attention immediately upon its discovery. There's stunning turn in the saga. I don't know if it's too stunning, man. You know, it seems like it's just the expected, as in, as this just comes more and more and more. Um, yeah, because it it's, just it's a trust stop. issue. Yeah, and you so can't was, trust them. It was right. November 2016. Um, and so Bloomberg News, I guess, broke it there. Yeah. So it was the exchanges between Mark Forkner, 
then Boeing's chief technical pilot for the 737. Is that crazy? Yeah, and another 737, Patrick Gustafson. Gust Gustafson. Um, it raised multiple concerns about the automated flight control system implicated in the crashes, including not being given data by the company's test pilots, and Forkner described his alarm at simulator tests in which he encountered troubling behavior in the system. Um, Boeing had earlier assured the aviation regulator the feature known as maneuvering characteristics augmentation system, that's the MCAS, right? People have probably heard that okay. term more, MCAS, M, um, was benign and didn't need to be included in the plane's flight manuals. Meanwhile, they have their chief technical pilots issuing warnings yeah. in writing. Right. Um, Forkner told Gustafson, Gustafson that MCAS was running rampant in the sim on me, referring to it. Granted, I suck at flying, but even this was egregious. I mean, just startling to anybody yeah. with, you know, a few brain cells when you're talking about hundreds of lives in the air on a new plane. Um, Forkner expressed concerns that he may have unknowingly misled the FAA, so I basically lied to the regulators. He wrote, it wasn't a lie, no one told us this was the case, yada, yada. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't stop. Two crashes within less five than five months. months. Pretty intense. 346 man. people, man. No doubt. Yeah. Pretty intense. The, uh, let's get over, take a look at the U.S. dollar. So, what you had out here last week, okay, DXY, you know, because we had the pound going high, the euro going higher. Dollar goes down with conviction. Um, you know, now the dollar's at 97.215. I suspect we're going to get into this, this 95. That being said, what we didn't get is, you know, the lower dollar, you know, we, gold went sideways. So this is going to be a big week, you know. Yeah. Meaning, you know, fundamentally, dollar going lower, we should be able to get some traction in the gold market. Sure. You know, well, so we'll see where this uh, baby is going to shake out this yeah. coming week. Uh, it looks to me that the it's going to be correlated in that yen. When we were talking with Teddy Kegstat, you know, this yen, folks, okay, if you're in the metals market, this 109 level, okay, is dangerous territory for, uh, for us uh, metal bulls. Uh, well, this is nice. It backed off a little. You know, we don't, I don't want that going over that 109.32, you know, because it's like, I could go to the moon like pretty quickly. Sure. Uh, so we backed off it. We you know we hit what 108.94 last uh, Thursday. You know, so we'll see where that shakes out. But I suspect at this particular point, that's what's basically, you know, holding the train up at this particular point. Oh, oil and gas, right? Let's see what's sure. happening here. Yeah, a little bit of weaker price in that oil market. CLX. So. CLX, where is it? I think you had it right there, November, WTI. Oh, it is, yes. Oh. Okay, so. 53 on the dot. Yep, and it hit 52.71. And we were above 54 earlier. Yeah, okay, so. It's just bouncing along this bottom here. Yeah, so let me see if that's the active one, too. CL. Yeah, I think so. Yep, it is. Yeah. So, we'll see. That that looks like it wants to hold at this point. There's not a lot of sellers right now uh, at this lower level. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. I want to know what's going on in your world. The world of the markets, folks. The S&P hasn't been able to hold these highs out here. We get the S&P right up nine. Up nine. Uh, NASDAQ is up 38. You get the Dow Industrials up 11. We'll come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 7, NASDAQ up 39, S&P's up 9.5. Let's just go to Apple for a second because what's intriguing here is that, you know, Apple got, got a good bid out here and the NASDAQ's sure not, got, uh, not up that much. They sure do, you man. You know, look at that. That's yeah. a new all-time high, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can Curious. we go to the description after? Yeah. Because what are they tipping at now? 1.0 what trillion? 1.08? Look at that, man. They're going to be at 1.1 in no time, man. Yeah. When are they going to be at 2? <laughs> so let's look inside the NDX here. Because that is quite a move, man. Look sure at is. You get C-Trip putting 3% in, JD 2.3. So two ADRs, maybe some trade deals going on there at the top. Yep, that's the China deal. Yep. yep. Fast and all, 2.3. Taking away from it, Ross Stores down 3.3. Ulta off 1.2. Maybe some earnings over there. I heard, I think we might get a quarter of the S&P this week. Really? Yeah. Biomolin down 1. We get Microsoft, I know. Can we jump to them since we're yeah. on Apple? Microsoft this week. Let's see when they pull up. Yeah, 23rd. 23rd. Today, I believe the 21st. Yes, so Wednesday after market, we get Microsoft. They're right on the heels, man, 1.057. Look at that. Huh? Yeah. Wow. So, that's, we got to go to natural gas. Everyone's still into natural gas. I don't know why, but <laughs> the bottom line is that, you know. The slide continues, People man. like to trade it. Lots it's, of natural this gas. Is, this Quite is heavy, heavy business out here this morning. So, we take a look at this. Okay, so I see what we have here. We, so you got a high volume low at 218 that wants to be tested. Okay. That was uh, generated on the 10th, uh, 11th of uh, October. Yep. You know, you blow that away, folks. And this, yeah, let's put it on. That's an important line. I'm just going to jump back real quick yeah. before we do because you got October 3rd right up there against, and, yeah. then, and then you go all the way back to August 23rd. It's right there. And then, yeah. you know, all of these line up pretty well. So important they, they area, do. man. Important they area, do. let alone if you start to dip back down to, you know, an even number of 210 would let alone two dollars on the spot exactly and now we'll put it on a continuous contract because this is going to be one big mess and i guess first i'll try a five year weekly and see if any clarity with that okay so we need we need the monthly i can see where we're going to go with this monthly it's going to get a battle it back, just gets so crazy all the way when back you put to it 2016. Back yeah. yeah i think that's what is it buck 50 about buck 61. yeah here so 
you know, it's going to get interesting for, because once you break into two, 202, you know, we're, we're 20 cents above that now, which is a lot. No, know, hey, but, but not when you're moving 10 pennies in, in a day, right? No, That's a, exactly. Keep, keep it on the horizon exactly. for context of how fast this thing can you move, know. man. And especially moving 10 pennies um, in a day. But where were we just in September? We were as high as 271. Yep. And we're just in the middle of October. So you're talking about six weeks, we're down 50 cents. And An another 50 cents, and we're right basically almost at that low. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 30 year. Oh, yeah, because if, if it breaks that, we want to know what's, what's the next it. level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's thinking. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's going to have trouble processing so many peaks and valleys. Look at that. Yeah. So when are we going back to $16? Yeah. <laughs> so what is that? That's 176 162 so that's 1999 and 2000 161 see 161's game here it's a big one right yeah 161's game yep wow that is a heads up beyond belief speaking of heads ups how about we jump to this jp morgan oh, call yeah. man right this one i caught my eye on the bloomberg this morning so if you've been following those money market accounts, we got a huge stress deal going on last month, right, with the spike of those short-term rates. Yes. J.P. Morgan warning that the U.S. money market stress to get much worse. Uh, J.P. Morgan says the money market stress that sent short-term borrowing rates surging last month is likely to get much worse, despite the Federal Reserve's attempts to inject billions of dollars into the financial system. So the Fed back it up, has offered overnight loans and started buying up to 60 billion of U.S. Treasury bills a month in yep. an effort to ease the pressure on the vast repo market where banks typically lend their assets in exchange for short-term financing. Secured lending rates shot up in late September. We'll get down to the chart in a moment. Yeah. You can see it. With analysts pointing to scarcity of interbanking reserves as well as regulations that limit the size of the bank balance sheets and their repo lending capacity as the potential culprits. J.P. Morgan says it's not convinced the Fed has resolved the issue in the funding markets, according to a note from analysts led by Joshua Younger in New York. Funding pressures resurfaced last week. Now, I hadn't heard about this. It didn't get as much headlines, I feel like, right. as this first spike. Right. Funding pressures resurfaced last week, even after primary dealers, firms approved to trade directly with the Fed, took all of the available overnight liquidity from the central bank and sold it as many T-bills as possible. So there's the big spike towards the end of September that yes. really got a lot of headlines. And there's the spike last week, man. You're, you're not supposed to be sitting at 2.4 when I believe the target rate is 1.75 to 2. Right. And and they, they go on here. We'll, yep. we'll move down a little Definitely. bit. They go on to explain this really well, folks. So, so picture, this is, well, we can go, let's go through it. Because what happened, what J.P. Morgan is saying is that the Fed, okay, is giving this to the primary dealers. The problem is the primary dealers can't give it to the banks below them, and that's what they're saying. Here, let's just go on. And, and that's, okay. that's a big deal. Do you know what I'm saying? So the overnight liquidity provided by the Fed goes directly to primary dealers, whereas those most in need of it are the non-primary dealers, yeah. the J.P. Morgan analyst wrote. The success of the program, therefore, depends on how much of the liquidity is passed along, but primary dealers are deterred from doing so by rules specifying how much capital they must hold to protect against losses. Meanwhile, a preliminary analysis of balance sheets at the largest banks based on their third quarter results suggests they may have to cut back on repo activity even more at year end to avoid liquidity charges. Right. Um, what new permanent reserves are being delivered to the banking system should face the same frictions. I mean, it makes sense, so right? So watch how this goes, folks. They, you know, we had the battle in the Depression, like how much money would the banks give back to their shareholders, right? Well, when you read through this, the bottom line is that now they've already given way too much money back to their shareholders, and that's what this is really about. They don't say in there, but their reserves are tight right now versus every time that you're doing either buybacks or doing more dividends, okay, the bottom line is that, you know, you tighten up your balance sheet, which... You know, is the reserve of the balance sheet. You know, so it's going to get intriguing watching the, the the end of the year because what also happens at the end of the year, everyone's trying to basically you know get their books done and you know. So we'll we'll see where this uh, baby shakes out. But you know, there's there's no doubt that what's intriguing is that the Fed is actually calling this anything and everything but what it really is. That they're monetizing debt again. That's what they're doing. You know, and monetizing debt means that they turn around, the Treasury issues a bond, the Fed turns around, 
creates the money digitally, buys the bond, and then keeps it on their balance sheet. And so J.P. Morgan analyst recommends investors use futures markets to position for the spread between the Fed funds rates and repo to widen in December, as this will capture year-end funding stress. I'm um, just talking about different ways to play that possible stress. It's going to be cool watching this now, right? I mean, you know, they, not that we want it to happen, folks. We don't. But, you know, we got like 60 days here, you know, to see what it's this, October, man. If they're yeah. talking about year end, man, we got right. 75 days. Yeah. In the, you oh, know, yeah. even less, 70 yeah. days in the end. Big, big money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's go to the interest rate market, right? Because we, yeah, as soon as we come back, we're going to look at that interest rate market. Dow, Dow is up eight, NASDAQ is up 48, S&P is up 11. We got uh, notes and bonds uh, down seven for the 10-year note, 18 for the 30-year bond. Tommy and I come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, and uh, let's go over. We're going to go over and take a look at this copper market because what we have, folks, is, uh, let's see, HGZ, HGZ. So in Chile right now, you have some heavy protest and, uh, you know, real problems. Oh, and Fortunately, I think it said eight people dead already in yeah. the unrest, yeah. And the Chilean miners, the copper miners, are thinking of going to strike also. And so, you know, if you take a look at this copper market, you know, copper looks to me like 270s game and, you know, 
We'll see. Yeah, you just got back inside two. Yeah, you can you can make you can make you can make make the case actually the two eighties game. We just got back inside the two sixty five. Uh, bottom line is that the uh, the amount of copper they have in Chile is a huge deal. But this is serious business, man. When you're talking about a major country that you know twenty thirty years ago, yeah, they were under military rule forever. Uh, but this thing, you know, well, this is tr soldiers patrolling the streets right now in Santiago after right. the president in that state of emergency. And I believe they have the market chart down here. There you go. There's the open. 3% 3, 3 plus down on the markets as unrest continues. And we were just kind of jumping around in an article during the break in terms of some visuals. And I guess it initially started from a fair increase. We'll scroll up yep. to get, um, let's see, where were we, right? It was a fair increase of one penny. Okay. So you can, for the you, trains or for Tommy the, and I were just talking that you know you think about a penny, but guess what? It was the thing that broke the camel's yeah, back. Yeah, straw right? that broke the camel's yeah, back. You right. know, unrest, and you have a uh, a billionaire president imposing fare increases, um, and maybe just that you know um, yeah type of discrepancy. And and as we know, same not same deal with Hong Kong, right? But Hong Kong, oh, they pass one bill, people protest, they take the bill back. It's too, too late. late. Um, it's too late because that was the straw that broke the back, and now, and hopefully, um, things get repaired just for for the life factor over there because that's pretty intense. It's, there's no let doubt. Let alone the business factor and the economic factors that go with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we go over to uh, here, I want to show you something else. Uh, if you go over to Barrick Gold, folks, okay, this is kind of interesting that Barrick is not even getting any traction out here today, but it's something you want to keep your eye on. The reason being is that Barrick made a deal with Tanzania uh, over the weekend. And it's, it's, it's a good deal. Well, it's a good deal because they were getting nothing out of it before. So Barrick has agreed to pay $300 million to Tanzania government to end the long-running dispute that it says destroyed the value of its subsidiary Arcadia. Acacia. Acacia mining assets. As part of the deal, which, was approved, which must be approved by the Tanzanian's attorney general, the government will be given a 16% stake in a renamed company. Uh, Barrick said Sunday in the statement... The payments are to sell. So what's going to happen here is that they're going to give the Tanzania government $300 million, plus they get a 16% stake in the renamed company, plus they get 50%, let me find this, of the royalties. Of okay, and that agreement means a ban on the export of the concentrates will be lifted, that I guess was on there. Exactly, because they would take, Barrick was taking in a billion dollars a year out of this mine. You know, so now they're going to divvy it up, okay? okay? But the bottom line is at least they have something now. Do you know what I mean? Sure. This was one of the bigger mines. Um, so the breakthrough ends a disagreement between Tanzania and Barrick. Subsidiary started in 2017. Tanzania banned the export of unprocessed metals, subsequent, subsequently presenting a case here with a $190 billion, billion. tax bill, <laughs> equivalent to two centuries of revenue. Okay. So a case here, which owned the three mines in Tanzania, was bought by Barrick this year. For almost two years, Barrick has been leading negotiations with them over the deal, first negotiated by the company's executive chairman, John Thornton. Right. Yeah. And see, Mike Bristow can get things done. That's the bottom line. If you've, you know, I've met, I've talked with this guy so many times, folks, okay? And so he grew up, uh, not in Tanzania, he grew up in South Africa, and he really is into those villages. Do you know what I mean? He was the guy when, with apartheid, okay? When apartheid come, he was the minister of the mines, and he is the guy that had to break them up and say, okay, you can have this one, you can have this one. And, you know, that in itself had to be a big negotiating power. Do you know sure. what I'm saying? I just, you know, it's the, it's the type of person. Sure. The guy's a great guy, man. So it's interesting that, yeah, it took him, you know. It's good. You have these poor poor communities over there, oh. and they're rich in um, assets and, totally. and hard, hard totally. assets and minerals, yeah. and they should be sharing in that. You know, you shouldn't right. just have foreign companies coming in and looting all their land of the minerals. No, totally. So and if you Google them, it's pretty cool. If you Google Mark Risto and Google Villages, you're going to see what he does is that I think it's either I think it's almost every year he goes on a motorcycle ride from village to village with with other guys, making sure that all the villa, all the things that they're doing uh, they come into fruition. Do you know nice. what I mean? And so it's just like walking down the street. If that's your, that's your street, you should be walking down the street. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So, yeah. So, the spy. <laughs> so the question is, uh, Tom, how does it look to you to shot the spy here? Well, what do you think? 
<laughs> people have been watching this program for, for a while. <laughs> Your laughter, I know. Oh, my God. Can we get... Play the script, Al. Play the script. Okay. Seriously, man. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Glad you can laugh at it. Uh, Here we go. I have to laugh you at it. You have to, I, I guess. Mean, I know. Give me a break, right? It's yeah, like... we're at 3,000 S&P. Yep. Right. Well, what I would do is this. Uh, you know, see this right here? Now, that being said, I wouldn't shot it right now because that high spike at uh, at the open, I'd want that to get at least try to get tested. That three, what's that, 303 again? Okay. You know, because most times that's what ends up happening. You get tested with lighter volume, then you get action, you know? Yeah. So, because watch what, yeah, we came down. It, had, it doesn't have a huge, huge amount of volume there, so. Can we go back to top to the news? Maybe yes. we'll find that a little sports uh, to lighten things up after oh, the, the Yankees. S&P. Oh, my God. So I'm sure we got plenty of New York listeners, New York, the hub yep. of finance, man, in the world, right? But it's not the hub of baseball in the last decade. Pretty remarkable. It ties into wealth in here as well. So if you've been following, uh, we're setting up for a World Series that now has Houston and Washington Nationals. Nationals. Washington never going to a World Series. Houston having quite a run recently. Yankees, not so much, man. And when you put the numbers on it, it's remarkable. So $2 billion spent in the decade, no titles, no World Series appearances even. So over the last 10 years, they've won 921 games more than any other team in baseball. They've made the play playoffs seven times. No other team played in October more often. But by any measure, except for the one the fans care about, winning the World Series. And they go down, they've spent $2 billion on player salaries. I mean, just staggering numbers, but guess what, man? Baseball in New York especially, Red Sox as well. Yeah. Um, the Yankees are doing just fine in terms of profits. Um, when they, they employed uh, at least eight current likely or possible future Hall of Famers, and yet along the way, settled into a strange new normal, um, they've become sort of franchise their fans and mocking. And where's, so here we go. The season-ending defeat to Houston in the American League Championship Series on Saturday it means for the first time since the 1910s, they've gone a full calendar decade without even appearing in the World Series. That's unheard um, of. yeah. And, you know, they talk about the 1990 Braves had a tough run where they made the World Series many times, didn't win it. But what the Yankees did in the 2010s is without president. No previous calendar decade since 1900 has the winningest team of the decade by regular season record failed to win at least one pennant. Wow. And the pennant is just getting into the World Series. Um, that and, is crazy. You know, for those baseball fans, man, I didn't catch the game. I had friends watching it. It must have been an awesome one to watch just in baseball because you had New York going to the top of the ninth down by two. They hit a two-run homer to tie it. Then Houston goes into the bottom of the, bottom of the ninth, and they jack a two-run homer to win it um, and take the series. With four, a walk-off, two-run two. homer, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Got to love October baseball no matter Huge. what, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And uh, we got the UK Speaker Burkow uh, blocking the vote for the Prime Minister's Brexit deal just now, actually. That's right. Yeah. Within the minute. That was just popping up. And uh, let's just see how the pound is reacting before we get into some of the specifics. So you saw an initial thrust right there, downward to about 129.6. But man, there was quick reprieve right back up to where that yeah. news broke. And what that had to do with is when we get into it is that now, this is the article before that news deciding, right? So right. you had Boris Johnson trying again to put his Brexit deal up for a vote. The government will introduce the detailed legislation needed, but it put him on a potential collision course with the speaker, who we now know said no, who could decide not to allow a vote because MPs already considered the issue on Saturday. I guess the speaker having the right to say you're not allowed to vote on it twice or even, I guess, consider right. it twice. They didn't know what was going to happen. Because he stopped them last time, too. Well, he stopped Theresa May last time. Yeah, but only, yeah. didn't didn't she get three it, votes? It was the same thing. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, but and I guess they said the fourth, but each time it said right. that, that he could have, I yeah. guess, stopped it because yeah. once it votes once, and that's the, the battle there is that is it different if there's somehow a small tweak or whatnot or even... But nonetheless, that news uh, breaking. And as we go back, so the headline there, speaker blocking the vote on the PM's Brexit deal today. And uh, I don't know enough about where we go from there, man, but the yeah, exactly. not reacting too much. And it's just the saga never ends over there, man. And if we take a look at the FTSE, that's not going anywhere either. We're at uh, 71.66. Okay. Up 16 points. Yeah, been in this consolidation since uh, January 2017. Look at man, that. that is. We're talking about you're yeah. going back even October of 16, man. That's yeah. a solid three years. Yeah. Right. And they've been in that for three and a half years, I think. I think it's three to three and a half years. Yeah, I think it's three and a half only yeah. because uh, our election now in November will be three years ago. And they preceded us by about six months or so, uh, something like right. that with their Brexit. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Lots changed since then, man. Homeboy. Oh, yeah. So let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities and see what we have going on out here. And it doesn't look like we're going to have a high volume market just I yet. I think we're going to be in the UKX here. Oh, yeah, we somehow. are. Oh, the Lloyds. Lloyds of London. Yeah. What are we at? SPX. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's see. We get Bank of America up 60 cents. Advanced Micro is up a buck. Apple's the big one, man. Up three three forty six. Yeah. You got uh, Halliburton. Halliburton had their earnings. Why don't we jump into them? Yeah, right, look at that. Of... that. That earnings wasn't great, and yet uh, they 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 pumping it up. So the world's biggest provider of fracking saw North American sales in the most recent quarter drop to the lowest level in more than two years. I chuckle because the stock's up a buck, yeah. trading at eighteen, um, amid a protracted slump in activity from shale explorers. $2.9 billion in revenue from the U.S. and Canada, which make up their largest region, lowest since the second quarter of 2017. They also reported overall revenue that declined 10%. But guess what? 
that was obviously priced into yeah. the, the stock nice. already. Go that. for it. Yep. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. Not a surprise, I guess, um, when you look at now. What it, we're we're back at the FTSE here. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. H A L. Yeah. That FTSE. We can't get away from Brexit, man. Ooh. Look at this thing. This thing's been bouncing along the bottom, evidently. Yeah. Oof, what a well, chart that when is. When you oh say it was God. factored in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And he, so, so July 2014, you're at $74, and this has just been bouncing along for three months. And if you go back to where it said lowest since, I believe, like 2017, so when those numbers were there, we were up at 60 bucks the last time that they were coming into these numbers. So it's been a slide since uh, quite a tough year for, for Halliburton. Yeah, and, you know, I well, look at this. This is, this is almost testing the lows of the Depression. <laughs> yeah, 2008, what was that? That was $12. The highest volume low though is 1552, and we got uh, 1697. And if you remember, when Cheney was vice president, they got the sweetest deal out there, man. They were exempt from everything. And there's your 2002 trading at six bucks, right. and they run up to over 53. Not bad to be in the fracking business and not have to be regulated. And um, the and no bid anything, whatever. But and then they, they also they spun off another company, which I forgot the name of it is, and the other company did amazing too. Okay, you know, which we you know, you yeah, you don't even see it in there. So sure. the thing that's wild is that you know, like when I look at Oil at 53, you know, evidently it takes a lot more than 53 for these guys to make money, you know, because this 53, you know, we've been there between 53 and 60 for a while now. It just seems like, you know, yeah, you know, that's a good price. I mean, yeah. it still seems expensive. I mean, I, we none of us want hundred dollar oil. That's for sure. You know, I just wanted to see if they actually broke it down. They don't. They just get into energy services group. I wanted to see actually how much of them is oil versus uh fracking natural yes. gas because they right. really went heavy on that when oh, they yeah. became the the fracking uh they call it what they call it the Halliburton clause or whatever where they yes. were just completely exempt from everything courtesy of the VP Cheney yeah not bad all about oil yep and then of course GE GE bought a couple big companies at the highs when oil was trading at 114 I mean yeah. that's, that's another problem with GE yes sure. that uh there's, there's How about Bitcoin if we could? Only because a oh, uh, little bit of a pop, 300 bucks, nothing to shake your head at. Back above uh, 8,000, 8,248. Yeah. I guess it looks like a blip on that chart, man. Right. But, and uh, did you see Facebook? Facebook, I mean, they're trying to scramble. Uh, they, they're coming out saying that uh, they will do a stable coin now. Uh, you know, bottom line is that I don't expect that thing to fly, period. I mean, it, 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 if they could get away with it regulation-wise, it would fly. There's no doubt about that, but, you know. Yeah. Probably earlier. Yeah, they got, they got this, there's you know, so much. They, they had them. everyone pull out. There we go. Oh, no, that's another yeah, one. Yeah, that, that's, a, this one's an interesting one, man. Look at this, okay? So, you know, this is, um, Facebook chief executive, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, has privately recommended several prominent hires to Pete uh, Buttigieg, Buttigieg, I yeah, believe president, that's the presidential campaign, a rare example of direct political So that's a Democratic candidate, right? Right. Um, right. A rare example of direct political involvement from one of the tech's most powerful execs. Um, yeah. You know, there was, a great, there was a great article, folks, about uh, Trump versus the Democrats of how the Trump campaign right now is all over digital. I mean, yeah. they're, they're burying the Democrats. I saw digital. you sent me the link. I had seen oh, the. Oh, did I? I okay, yeah, cool. and I, I saw yeah. the headline as well. Some friends right. talking about it. I hadn't. Right. And it was just how uh, the Trump campaign plowing into digital they're ads. They set up. All right. Yeah. So, you know, guess what? You know, competition is a big deal. Yeah. Let's go to our man, Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, what's going on, brother? Good morning, guys. How y'all doing today? Doing good. Good morning, Jim. How about all that hey, rain we morning. got this morning? Did you get that rain? Oh, yeah, we got it. We got a, right around five inches where wow. I live. It was unbelievable, man. It's this lot of rain, man. It yeah. was. <laughs> so, we needed it, though. No, we didn't. Yeah, the we grass did. is going to be growing. There's, there's, totally. no, there's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. Yeah. So what are we going to yeah. look at, Jim? Uh, I'd like you to look at PFPT, Proof Point. P -F Paul, Frank, Paul, Tom. Okay, cool. Yeah.
<laughs> Let's see. The uh, Enterprise Software Solutions, the low for the year 75, the highs 133, trading at 120. Awesome. Quick break. We're going to come right back. Stay right there, folks. we got Jim from Palm, Tom from Palm Harbor. Tommy and I will be right back. We're going to be looking at proof point. $6.7 billion company. Not bad. Never heard of it. I, I know, man. It's a beautiful thing. It place. is. Yeah. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down five. NASDAQ is up 53. S&Ps are up... Uh, 10, we're talking to our man Jim from Palm Harbor. We're talking about proof point. So do you own this right now, Jim, or are you looking to buy it? I was looking to buy it. I don't own it yet. So what we have here, you know, I mean, it's, it's been on a tear. There's no doubt about that. That monthly was quite a chart. Yeah, it really does. So you can see that, you know, bottom line is that uh, this is a daily. Uh, so we came down pretty hard last week. I don't know. Did they just come out with numbers? Let me see. I don't think so. I think oh, like no, look at this. Yeah, they're coming out the 24th. So Thursday after market. Yeah, so I would wait until, I mean, it looks to me, when we put this on a monthly, what you're going to see is it's a monster consolidation, you know, but the bottom of that consolidation, which is sticking out like a sore thumb, is that... It's a year ago. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty intense. The, the top of that is 109, and the low is 75.92. Can I pull up the news? Yeah. I'm just curious yeah. if there's anything in here. What, do you know what happened last week at all, Jim, um, for this? Um, no, I noticed that uh, the CEO had sold uh, 
twice uh, quite a bit of share oh, over the okay. last little bit when it got up around 130. So. Yeah, it seems that, yeah. that that's the topping out area. You can see, in the, you know, each and every time it's got up there, it's given it up quite a bit, you know. So yeah. I'd wait for the other side of that to get back down, and that's cool. that's, that'd be quite a hit if that's the case. I was just curious because look at Thursday and Friday, man. You go right. from 132 to 118 right. in a heartbeat, and it was Jeez. a slow, steady yeah. decline. Let me see if it... Yeah, what, what, I thought the, uh, the bottom of the... Uh, handle on a daily chart that uh, it, after it had one gap up and then it had another gap up, I thought maybe that 118 area would be a good um, spot to try to maybe buy it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that before the earnings, man, because that downdraft that was in there in June is a big number, man. Uh, okay. <laughs> Cooking, well, brother. Thanks for the call, Jim. Y'all have a good one. You too, man. Stay right there, folks. Fast Mac to come up next. The man has a chat with Steve Rose. Day right back to seven. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Rick.